Um, the idea came out of being a new council member, you meet a lot of interesting people along the way, right? Especially if you're engaged and, and sort of seek out information on various issues, whether that be um, Black Lives Matter, um, American Rescue Plan, information about COVID, but generally speaking about the Eastern Shore, right? Like how do these issues impact the Eastern Shore? And so we started um, thinking about a statement that, that um, Elizabeth Watson, um, who's a resident here in Chestertown and who um, is the heritage, um, is the executive director of Heritage Strategies and has worked with stories of the, Her of the Chesapeake Heritage, sorry, stories of the Chesapeake Heritage Areas, um, who said to me 20 years ago, you know, Tom, the Eastern Shore and Kent County in particular is a jewel of colonial landscape. It is, it is probably the pr best preserved uh, colonial era, um, colonial era area in, in the United States. And I, I kind of got to thinking about that, like, well, okay, so what does that mean, right? Like, I ride down the road, I see silos, I see telephone poles, I see modern industry and whatnot. But then every once in a while, you're out in the countryside and you see a pastoral landscape, and you, you think to yourself, that's the same landscape that George Washington saw when he rode from Annapolis to Chestertown, right? And so then you begin to extrapolate on that theme, and you think about it um, a little bit differently, and you think, well, we have a direct lineage, right? We have people who have lived here for 300 years, and uh, we have industries that have existed here, farming and farms, that, that not only existed 300 years ago, but have progressed all the way through, um, sort of in an uninterrupted fashion. And, you know, I began to think more about that. And as I, you know, became um, more, more active with social justice groups in, in our area, you can, you can begin to see and, and unpack the histories of people that often don't get a voice, that often don't get to talk, that often don't get a, um, um, you know, a full-throated examination of their history. And I, one, other th one other interesting thing, you know, when you ride around, Kent County in particular, but the Eastern Shore more generally, um, our, our buildings and our landscapes are uninterrupted all the way back to the colonial to the colonial time, whereas you just go across the bay to Richmond, say, right, and the history there starts at the Civil War, and that's due in large part because the Civil War upended so much, it destroyed so many buildings, it it changed so much of the landscape, um, and I think it's kind of amazing and something that that really needed to be explored. So we started this project, and the first season has been to really to talk about that that thesis, the colonial landscape and what it means to us, how it impacts us today and how we can preserve it and how we can grow and uh, grow and develop it responsibly, but also leave it for for future generations in a, in a good way. So um, you know the first guest was uh, Elizabeth Watson, and we talked about that in detail. And she took us all the way through from the beginning all the way up to, present day. And then from there we spoke with Gail Owings, who's the current executive director for Stories of the Chesapeake Heritage Areas, and she painted a picture of what, you know, how to achieve balance, right? So, um, and what Stories of the Chesapeake does for our area, right? Things like um, Garfield Center for the Arts, preserving our um, buildings, architecture, our history, um, Sumner Hall, um, and partnerships with them. So, you know, that kind of got me going. And then I started to think about, well, okay, so how do we make this a place where people can come and enjoy it and, and not necessarily be um, impacted as, as dramatically by vehicles and whatnot? So I brought in Owen Bailey, who's the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy um, Town Projects Manager, to talk about ways that we can calm traffic, um, make this make our cities and streets more walkable, um, but also how we can preserve farmland and conserve farmland for the future, but yet still have it be 
you know, a producer of food and, um, and uh, provide jobs and, and development for, for, our, um, for our residents. And, and our final guest was Annie Richards, the Chester Riverkeeper, um, to talk about how we leave this environment for the next generation of, of folks coming on, right? Um, and, and leave a better river and a better, um, a better town by virtue of stormwater management and various other projects that will, that will put Chestertown and Kent County and the Eastern Shore on the best possible foot forward, footing forward for climate change, um, sea level rise, and, um, and reducing pollutants in our river. Fascinating conversations. It, it absolutely informs the way that I think about things, right? Um, be, because I'm not in this for the moment, right? I want to. I want to leave. You know, I always talk about it in terms of my chair, the Ward Two chair. I want to leave that chair and the downtown area in a better place for you know the next person that comes along, whenever that may be. Um, and I want I want young people to come here and discover a town that 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 lifts them up, right? That encourages them to settle, to slow down, build a family, engage with, you know, their communities, engage with the schools, engage with, you know, town and county government. Um, that's how we build a future, right? And we've got, we've got so, such a wealth of, of backstory, a, a wealth of information, a wealth of uh, smart people, characters, who can help foster that along. And my job is to just sort of make that job a little bit easier. 